the section 1 we had discussed diode basically a two terminal element. In this section, section 2 we will be discussing amplifier, one of the important signal processing element block as uh, against the diode which is a two terminal element this can be now this has to be a three terminal element. There should be an input port or input pair of terminals and there should be an output pair. This is called input port, this is called output port, this is the black box. So, input port is nothing but a pair of terminals here, wherein input variables appear, which could be input voltage and input current, input voltage and input current. Output port is the other pair, where the output voltage and output current appear. Normally, we are going to have something called load here, let us say load resistance, onto which the output is going to be fed. It could be another stage also, right, of amplification. So, that means it will be later on may be cascaded to another stage, whatever be that will be the load for the amplifier stage. This is going to be fed by what is called a source. that source can be represented as a voltage source with a series resistance R L. This is one way to represent the source. These are either as a voltage source in series with a resistance or this could be also represented as a current source in shunt with the resistance. And uh, using Thevenin's theorem, you have seen that any non-ideal source can be represented either as a voltage source in series with the resistance or as a current source in shunt with the resistance. In which case, we can say that this is equivalent to as long as I s is equal to what is called as the short circuit current in this particular case. This is short, short a, the short circuit current is V s by R s. So, that is the value of I s. So, these are exactly equivalent this is Thevenin's equivalent for a source, this is what is called Norden's equivalent for a source. So, any source which is exciting our amplifier, this source is therefore, sources. These are necessary to excite the amplifier, right. Any source that is necessary to excite the amplifier is going to be non-ideal, assuming that it is non-ideal, can be represented as a terminal equivalent, the voltage source in series with the resistance or as a current source, where the current value is nothing but the short circuit current V s by R s in parallel with the resistance, this is the equivalent. These theorems you have already studied in your network course. In the same networks program, we have also learned something about what is called two port networks. So, the part that we have learnt in the two port network, we have to revise now. 
in order to understand and appreciate what is happening with amplifiers that we are going to design and use. So, let us therefore, try to understand about first ideal amplifier. Just as we understood ideal diode and its application and later on saw how non-ideality brings about some modifications in what is called the equivalent okay? and then how this can be incorporated in the analysis. Same way, we will now use this two port theory in order to understand about amplifiers. See what are ideal amplifiers, what are the types of amplifiers available and how these can be realized in practice later. So, this exciting source could be another amplifier feeding onto this. So, in a general situation, this could be one amplifier feeding onto this primary amplifier of ours, which can always be represented as a voltage source in series with a resistance and it could be feeding on to another amplifier okay, which could be treated as the load or you can have an independent source here. Okay. So, let us talk of independent sources. What are independent sources? Independent sources are our signal generators, maybe the sine wave signal generator or uh, audio signal generator, okay, it is called, or it could be the transducer, which is converting, let us say, mechanical energy into electrical energy. Okay, that also can be represented as a source, or whatever we had discussed earlier, an LED. Okay, which is converting light signal into electrical signal. Okay. So, uh, that is uh, the LED output can be used here or we can use also, uh, let us say, solar cells. The light from the LED can be used to fall on a photo detector okay? and that can be used for further amplification etcetera. So, we can convert one form of energy into another energy. We can use the LED as the load here and convert the analog signal, electrical signal into light signal and again process it further if you want. This light signal can be converted into a source here by using, uh, let us say, photo uh, diode. Okay. So, these days with uh, availability of optonics, this kind of conversion commonly takes place, converting electrical signal into light signal and back into electrical signal. So, basically independent sources are all those which can generate electrical signal from some other form mechanical or otherwise. This could be uh, let us say a microphone which will convert the sound signal into electrical signal or this could be a speaker which will convert the electrical signal into sound signal. So, we have independent sources and the amplifiers are now called dependent sources. So, this is the distinction between independent source which could be a transducer okay, or let us say which is photodiode okay, and uh, let us say uh, pressure transducer, strain gauge, okay. microphone, this could be a transducer, independent sources or just plain electrical signal generator. 
test signal. This is to test these amplifiers, etc. We could finally apply okay, test signals at the input. So, amplifiers are dependent sources. This is what we have to understand. That is, the parameters here, V naught or I naught, could be dependent upon V i or I i. The output parameter V naught or I naught okay, could be de dependent upon V i or I i. Consider an ideal situation here that this is an open circuit. This is an ideal situation now I am talking of. This is an open circuit in which case I i is automatically 0. So, if the input port okay, open circuit then obviously, I i is 0 which means this amplifier becomes voltage controlled. We will uh, abbreviate it as V c voltage controlled. So, if the input port is an open circuit then I i is 0. It is controlled by only V i and because I i is 0, V i is same as V s. Okay? Nothing is lost in the source resistance. Whatever be the source voltage is going to appear as input voltage to this amplifier. So, then we call it as voltage controlled amplifier. Okay. The output can now have is current dependent upon voltage or its output voltage dependent upon input voltage. Let us consider again an ideal situation here one of those where output voltage is dependent upon input voltage. So, we will now say that output port is going to be a voltage source ideal. So, output port is going to be an ideal voltage source whose output voltage is going to be dependent upon the input voltage. So, we will call this as let us say k times v i. So, if it is therefore, the output port we can now draw a voltage source, ideal voltage source that means, its source impedance is 0. Right? So, V naught is going to be k times V i, because its source impedance is 0. right? this V naught is going to be same as this source voltage. So, V naught is equal to k times V i. Now, this is therefore, called a voltage source. So, what is it? This kind of amplifier is therefore, called voltage controlled voltage source.
is one type of amplifier. Voltage controlled voltage source. If therefore, I have this as non-ideal obviously, right, then I might have a what is called as an output resistance which is non-zero for this. this becomes non-ideal. At the output, it becomes non-ideal. Then I might have non-infinite input impedance So, in an ideal voltage control voltage source R i is infinity R naught is 0. Is that clear? This is called an ideal voltage control voltage source. This is one of the most important amplifiers that is possible ideally, okay, where input port becomes voltage controlled. Now, this is something that we have to understand. It becomes voltage controlled when I i is 0, going towards 0, that the input current is extremely small the value of R i should be very large. No, large compared with what? Now, any comparison here in practice should be made with reference to what it is going to get as input. This input voltage here is going to remain undisturbed as V s as long as I i is 0. That is possible when only R i is very high compared with what? Compared with R s. Okay. So, this is a voltage source drive as long as R s is much less than R i. That means, in a practical situation, I can call this system, which is being fed by a non-ideal source into a non-ideal port as voltage controlled as long as R s is much less than R i. In such a situation, right, V i is going to be very close to V s. So, this port becomes voltage controlled. So, practical V c V s therefore, has R s much less than R i. And similarly, here let us understand it on the output port. K V i should be very close to V naught. That can happen only when the drop across this is negligibly small, which means R L has to be much greater than R naught or R L has to be much greater than So, in a practical amplifier, you will call this an amplifier which is close to voltage control voltage source, if you know what is the source that is feeding this amplifier and what is the load. So, given the source and the load, I can call this a voltage control voltage source amplifier only when I have R s the source resistance okay, much less than what is called as input resistance of the amplifier. So, R i is called input resistance. By the same thing, I can call this really voltage 
source as the output dependent independent that is dependent voltage source only if R L is much greater than R naught which means R naught is called the output resistance. These are the important parameters of the amplifier input resistance. Okay. What is input resistance? It is nothing but V i divided by I i. Suppose therefore, I look at it here voltage across this is V i that divided by I i is defined as input resistance. Okay. So, this is V i by I i. And at the output, the output resistance is going to be very small compared to R L, then we call it a voltage source output. Okay. And how do we measure the output resistance? It is very simple. If V i is 0 and I excite this by V naught, then V naught by I naught is going to give me the output resistance. Remember, this dependent voltage has to be made 0. How do you make? Put V i is 0. So, this voltage source is going to give 0 output and then excite here by means of a voltage we call it V naught, excite it by V naught, then the current drawn I naught is going to give me R naught. So, V naught by I naught when V i is 0 is defined as the output resistance for this. So, output resistance and input resistance are important parameters of this amplifier which we are calling as voltage control voltage source amplifier. In case these relationships are satisfied. So, the ideal voltage control voltage source on the other hand as R i equal to infinity and R naught equal to 0. Yeah. The most important parameter of this voltage control voltage source amplifier is k. What is k? k is defined as open circuit voltage gain. What is it? When the load is infinity, because if it is non-ideal, the load has to be infinity. If the load is infinity, open circuit output, it is open circuit, output is open circuited. Then output voltage is same as k times V i. So, this k is called open circuit voltage gain. That is what it means is open circuit means R L okay, is equal to infinity or in the case of ideal voltage control voltage source R naught is 0. Okay. So, V naught is going to be equal to k times V i, there is no problem. The only parameter that will exist then of significance in the case of an ideal okay, voltage control voltage source is k the voltage gain. Therefore, this is what is called voltage gain. Now, let us see, let us do the analysis here. V i is going to be equal to R i by R i plus R s in practice times V s. Look at this resistance, this is another resistance. So, it is going to get attenuated here, this signal V s because of its finite source resistance is going to get attenuated and is going to appear as R i by R i plus R s into V s, which means if it is voltage controlled, this factor of attenuation is going to be very nearly equal to 1. Uh, this is not going to get attenuated at all because 
R i is going to be very large compared to R s. Then we call it as voltage control. Okay. Otherwise, it is going to get attenuated a lot. That is not the purpose of a good amplifier. Okay. The moment you connect it to the source, drastic reduction in volt input voltage occurs. So, a voltage controlled amplifier therefore, will be highly suitable for this kind of source with source resistance which is very small. Now, look at the output circuit k times v i is going to get divided between R l and R naught. So, the actual voltage we will call as v naught is going to be equal to k times v i that is the source divided by R naught plus R l into R l. So, if you mark this as plus minus and this as plus minus, then V naught is going to be k times V i into R l by R naught plus R l or now if you want to find out what is the output voltage in terms of the source voltage, then we have here k times R l by R naught plus R l times V i and V i will substitute from this which is R i by R i plus R s times V i. So, you can see that the actual gain of the amplifier is going to be k which is the open circuit voltage gain times the attenuation suffered at the output which is R l by R naught plus R l. Had it been ideal voltage source at the output, then R naught would have been very small compared to R l and this factor also would have been very close to 1 and this factor would have been close to 1 and output voltage is very nearly equal to open circuit voltage gain into the source voltage. So, if you have a good amplifier which is voltage controlled voltage source, then this going is going to be very close to k which is the open circuit voltage gain. Okay. Now, there are certain terminologies here. This circuit is said to be unilateral. What does it mean? It is something that you have seen bilateral earlier. That is whether I apply voltage here and obtain a voltage there and apply voltage here and obtain a voltage there. Okay. There is transmission in both directions okay. and it almost behaves in identical fashion in both directions. Let us say whereas, in this particular case when I apply V i here this V i gets transferred to this side as k times V i and the effect of that appears here. So, the transmission is possible only in one direction. In the other direction when I apply a voltage V naught here, if I apply an independent source V naught, nothing happens to it on at the input side. That means, input is okay, not influenced by what happens at the output, whereas output is influenced by what is happening at the input that is called unilateral that is only in one direction okay, signal is transmitted. In the other direction no signal is transmitted. An ideal amplifier therefore, is unilateral. Okay. The ideal voltage control voltage source is unilateral and the practical voltage control voltage source that we have now shown is still unilateral there is no effect of what happens at the output at the input side. So, 
most of the amplifiers that we are going to discuss can be considered unilateral approximately, right. So, very little of transmission that is going to occur. That also if it occurs, it is going to be occurring to a very small extent, which can be neglected. Now, <coughs> if there is some effect here from this side to this side, obviously this B naught or I naught has to be represented as a source here and that is called feedback. What is at the output is fed back to the input port. So, if there is some effect due to V naught or I naught at the input port that has to be represented as a voltage or current source, right. And that is called feedback. And in, in, in a unilateral circuit, there is no feedback. In a unilateral circuit, there is only feed forward. The signal feed is only in the forward direction. There is no feedback. or the feedback factor is 0. So, the feedback factor is 0. That is what, there is no interaction of what is happening at the output at the input port, whereas what is happening at the input port is getting transmitted at to the output. Now, this has to be very, very clear. Now, obviously, we can represent this in the two port parameter vector. Let us see what is this two port parameter. Before we go to the two port parameter, I would like to also discuss what exactly amplification means practically. Amplification, this is something that I have always means right, power amplification. Amplification does not really mean only voltage amplification or current amplification. Amplification always means power amplification. What is power? power at the input, there are two ports here now, therefore, we have power fed at the input and power fed at the output. So, input power is I i into V i. Output power is I naught into V naught and therefore, power gain is nothing but output power divided by input power, which is what is it? V naught I naught divided by V i i i, which is a very significant relationship. It is this that we want in every amplifier. If we get V naught over V i as a factor greater than 1, then even if I naught over I i is less than 1, there is still power gain possible. If V naught over V i is less than 1, as long as I naught over I i is greater than 1, there is still power gain possible. That is why voltage amplifier as well as current amplifiers okay, still are suitable for power amplification. So, this is something that you have to 
in a passive device, two port network, let us say. If you take a passive network comprising of only resistors, capacitors, and inductors, then you can prove that V naught i naught divided by V i i i is always less than or equal to 1. For example, if the network that is put in the back box is made up of only ideal inductors and capacitors, then you can see to it that V naught i naught divided by V i i i is always equal to 1, because there is no dissipative element in the whole structure. Okay. What is inputted will appear as output. This is a classic case of a transformer, for example. Right? You put a transformer, for example, you can get V naught greater than V i, but I naught uh, by I i will be less than okay, 1 by the same factor by which it is greater also. So, that the multiplication becomes equal to 1. So, in the case of a transformer, ideal transformer, V naught I naught by V i I i is equal to 1, whether it is stepping up voltage or stepping up current. It is of no consequence, it is not an amplifier. An amplifier is one where V naught I naught by V i i i is greater than 1. And therefore, the fact that it is magnifying voltage does not necessarily mean it is amplifying. The fact that it is magnifying current does not necessarily mean it is acting as an amplifier. We should always find out what the power amplification is, then only we have this unit becoming an amplifier. Such a thing is possible using what are called as active devices. These active devices could be anything that we can think of, the technology can think of. This could be tubes, this could be transistors, bipolar or field effect transistors, this could be op amps. So, these active devices are the ones which if designed properly, which if biased properly can give you power amplification, not always guaranteed to give, but if you coax them to work for you by designing them properly, by biasing them properly, they might give you power gain. They might work in a range where amplification exists. So, this is an important this thing and therefore, we will also know what this unit is, this is a ratio, this is normally expressed in terms of decibel. What is that? This is nothing but 10, deci indicating 10, log to the base 10 of this ratio. so many decibels, because in practice, if all, for example, input port is an open circuit or very nearly an open circuit, we know that I i is 0. That means, input power is going to be 0. So, this is going to be 0, but there will always be output power. So, most of the amplifiers that we are going to discuss will have either i i very close to 0 or v i very close to 0. We will consider those amplifiers also. So, we will have these factors going towards 0 most of the time and this is finite. So, this factor is very, very high close to infinity, which means it is better to express this as a ratio okay, rather than uh, I mean ratio converted to decibel rather than leave it as a ratio, which is going to be a huge quantity. Right. Now, let us 
try to work out an example, an amplifier, we do not know what type of amplifier it is, we will come to know only after we go through the entire problem. With R i equal to 100 kilo ohm, R i equal to 100 kilo ohm and R naught equal to 1 kilo ohm is excited by a voltage source with source resistance equal to 10 k. So, automatically source resistance is 10 k and R i is 100 k. So, it is a voltage controlled block. So, R s equal to 10 k and R l equal to 10 k. Obviously, at the output, the output resistance is 1 k and load resistance is 10 k, it is voltage source. So, obviously, the amplifier now can be categorized as belonging into voltage control voltage source category. The open circuit voltage gain is 10 to power 3. So, the k value is given as 10 to power 3. Determine the voltage amplification factor V naught over V L. So, now this is a very simple problem which is normally encountered in any amplifier. Okay. So, V naught over V s from this diagram, we can now see the diagram is going to be 100 divided by 100 plus 10 times V s into 10 to power 3 okay, multiplied by 10 divided by 10 plus 1. So, 100 divided by 100 plus 10 times V s okay, is going to be V i and that is going to be multiplied by 10 to power 3 appears at the output and that is going to be further attenuated as 10 divided by 10 plus 1. So, the answer is very simple. So, we have it here as 10 by 11 to 10 by 11. Okay. So, 10 by 11 squared times 10 to power 3. Which could be uh, converted into uh, sort of decibel. This is something that you have to be very careful about. We have defined 10 log to the base 10 or power ratio as okay, decibel. Whereas, if it is voltage ratio, okay, V naught square divided by V i square, okay, V naught square divided by let us say uh, uh, R l, okay, V i square by R i, R l and R i being equal to the same value that is the definition of voltage ratio, okay, in which case this becomes equal to 20 log to the base 10 of voltage ratio or it can be put in the current ratio also, right. That is voltage taken across the same load, okay, both in the case of output as well as input, that power, okay expressed in terms of voltage ratio or current ratio will turn out to be 20 log to the base 10 of V naught over V i. Okay. If you are ex expressing therefore, this in terms of voltage ratios, you should put it as 20 log to the base 10 V naught over V i. If it is power, okay, 10 log to the Sim Similarly, current ratio also is expressed always in terms of 20 log I naught over so, if you are going to express voltage ratio in terms of decibels, then this will be very nearly equal to 60 decibel, right. This is going to be 20 log of this factor, which is going to be very nearly equal to 60 decibels. You can calculate it exactly as a homework problem. Please do calculate it. It is going to be very nearly 60 decibels. Okay. Now, I would like to at this juncture introduce you to other types of amplifiers. This is not the only type of amplifier existing. Obviously, 
we just said it could be voltage controlled voltage source. Instead, it could be current controlled. What is the difference between voltage controlled and current controlled? This is something that we have to understand now because only in the present day electronics people are coming up with uh, other types of sources which are more important than the so called voltage controlled voltage source which was traditionally in existence as an amplifier. Okay. So, we should learn about other amplifiers equally well. So, current control what does it mean? We just said in the case of a voltage control situation I i was 0 or R i was infinity. In the case of current control obviously and it is controlled by V i. In the case of current control situation we will have R i equal to 0. It is a short circuit. Here it was an open circuit. Here it is a short circuit. R i is 0. Okay. That means, V i is 0 and it is controlled by I i. Is the dis distinction understood? In the case of a voltage control block, I i was 0 for which to happen R i had to be infinity. We called it open circuit at the input port, open circuit port. and it was getting controlled by V i. Now, this is a short circuit port. R i is equal to 0. Consequently, V i is equal to 0 and it is controlled by I i. And therefore, we had to learn about this amplifier which is current control and it could be instead of a voltage source, it could be a current source. So, output port, this is the case of input port situation. Output port could be therefore, an ideal current source. So, we get this block as current control current source as a second important block acting as an ideal amplifier. First type was ideal voltage control voltage source. So, this is ideal current control current source second type of amplifier. So, how do we represent this? So, this will be a short at the input port and a current source. So, if I i is the input current, V i is 0 and output is going to be k times I i okay. and this is the output port it is connected to load. Obviously, we must drive this okay, again by a non ideal source whatever it is. So, we would rather drive it using current source okay, which could be ideal or when it is non ideal it can have because we will not use the other source it cannot become ideal right? because it is a voltage source it will get shorted. Right? So, we will do the current source which could become ideal with this going to infinity. So, R s. So, this is the way we are exciting. This is the same non ideal source I s centered by an R s. Okay. So, this is called compare this with the other amplifier. This is now called 
short circuit current gain because in case this also has non ideality which is the output imp impedance here right so if this has non ideality which is the output impedance then this current is going to be the short circuit current okay so this is called short circuit current gain so k is called short circuit current gain this is a current amplifier as against what we had discussed earlier which is a voltage amplifier this is called voltage amplifier this can now be called current amplifier ideal voltage amplifier ideal current amplifier in fact ideal current amplifier close to ideal current amplifier we have goth devices later see how the practical devices are close to this 